Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Hsu. In this video, I'm going to cover what's new in the develop module in Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC. Now the big news for people with high resolution monitors in particular is that the sliders are now more responsive. So if you were experiencing issues with that in the past, you should see improvement. You can learn more about this in my video on performance improvements. Other than this, there are several smaller new feature additions. I'll start out in the crop tool. We have an auto button now that will auto straighten or level our photos. I'll click on it and it's straight. Of course, we have all of the other tools we can use to straighten if auto doesn't work well. I'll go ahead and close the crop tool and I'll go to the next photo. I'm going to show you a new feature that's available in both the graduated filter and radial filter that allows you to brush in additions and subtractions to your filters. Note that the filters themselves are not new with Lightroom 6, so for complete instruction, check out my Fundamentals and Beyond series. What's new is just the brush feature. I'll show it to you in the graduated filter. In this photo, I want to darken and add clarity and contrast to the foreground, so I'm going to click and drag up. I'll go ahead and reduce the exposure and add clarity and contrast. Now, I love how quickly I could do this with the graduated filter, but I don't like how it's affected this water area here. If I turn on the mask overlay here, you can see exactly what area in my photo the filter has affected. You can also toggle this on and off with the shortcut O. I'll leave it on for the moment. I'm going to go to the new brush tab, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit and select the erase brush, and I'm going to click and drag to erase this area from my filter. I seem to have a little bug going on right here on the edge, but I'm going to ignore that. Now when I type O to turn off the overlay, you can see that we have the contrast and clarity enhancement at the bottom here, but not over by the water. I can also add to my filter. For example, if I want to add that contrast and clarity up here on the cliffs, I'll click on brush A to add, and then I'll simply paint the areas that I want to affect. And then O again shows me where I've done that. So this is available in the radial filter as well as the graduated filter. Next, I'll go to this photo to show you a couple new features available in the adjustment brush. I'll show you that we can now brush a straight line and we can move our mask. I want to darken this bottom area here and rather than use the graduated filter, I'm going to paint in the area with the adjustment brush. Frankly, I could do it either way. I'll click on the adjustment brush, and I'll go with negative exposure. And when I'm painting down here at the bottom, I can paint very sloppily. Let me go with the darker exposure so you can see this. But up against the edge here, I really want to draw a straight line. So I'll use the left bracket key on my keyboard to get a smaller brush, and I'll click here on the left and then I'll hold the shift key down, come over to the right, and then click again. So that gives me a straight line. Clicking at the beginning and then shift clicking at the end. Now regardless of whether you're drawing a straight line or not, if you paint and then want to move the mask or the area that you've painted, you can click on the pin and drag. So notice it's moving the mask, which defines what area is being affected. So that's a handy little addition as well. Now, if you're used to clicking on the pin here to adjust the sliders, you can now get that behavior by holding down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on PC, and then clicking and dragging up or down. If you look over at the sliders on the right, you'll see that that's affecting my exposure slider. I'll put the adjustment brush away by clicking back on it, and I'll go to this next photo to talk about the new pet eye feature. I'll click to zoom in. Here in the red eye tool, we have a new pet eye tab here that we can click on to address yellow or green or other shades of pet pupils that have been illuminated by flash. I can click and let go. Lightroom will analyze the area and size the fix as it sees fit. Now I'm going to turn off this little circle here by unchecking add catch light and I'll come back to that. By the way, if you want your red eye circle to auto hide as you move your mouse out of the photo so you can evaluate the fix better, then down here in the toolbar, change the drop down to auto. 
If you don't see your toolbar, type T. Now, in this case, the fix is not big enough. This yellow ring around the eye shouldn't be there. I know that because I photographed my dog without flash, and there's no yellow ring there. So I'll go back to the flash photo. Now, because I left the photo, I need to click on this circle to make it active again. To enlarge the fix, I can click and drag on the edge when I have this double arrow, or I can come over to the slider here and slide it to the right. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't do a very good job here. It's not dark enough, and it also has a very soft edge, so I'm really not satisfied with the results. In this case, I would turn to the adjustment brush to do a better job at darkening here. Now, the Add Catch Light feature will add a specular highlight into the pupil because the natural catch light has been blown out by that yellow or green effect. You can move the catch light by clicking and dragging on this circle. To fix the other eye, I'll just come over and click. Then I would adjust this. If I don't like my fix and I want to delete it, because I was just working on it, I can hit the delete key. To delete this other one, I need to click on it to make it active, and then I can hit the delete key. Instead, I'm going to zoom out here and put the red eye tool away so that we can see that at least when we're zoomed out, we can possibly get away with that fix. Next, I'm going to go to a photo taken with my Olympus camera. I want to show you a new message down in the Lens Corrections panel. For most DSLR cameras, Lightroom has profiles that you can apply here to correct distortion that your lenses cause, as well as darkening or vignetting around the corner. However, for the new mirrorless and Micro Four Thirds cameras, the distortion is so much that Lightroom applies a profile to your photos automatically right from the start, so there's no need to come enable profile corrections. And in fact, because of this, you won't find a profile for your lens here to apply. What's new is simply that we have a message down here telling us that that's the case, so I can rest assured that a profile's been applied. Now note, if I ignore that message and I go ahead and check this box to enable corrections, it then gives me a message saying it can't find a profile. Just ignore that, knowing that there already is a built-in lens profile. Let me go back to this Oaxaca photo to show you another shortcut that's been added on the Basic tab down here in Lens Corrections. We now can use the shortcut Control Tab to cycle through the upright options, which level and correct the perspective in our photos. So I'm hitting Control Tab as I'm cycling through these. Now it is Control Tab even on the Mac, it's not Command Tab. If you're using upright and you already had applied a crop and you want that to be respected, the new shortcut for that is Option Control Tab on the Mac. It doesn't look like you have the option available on the PC. I'm going to go back to my first photo and I'm going to go into soft proofing. Soft proofing allows us to preview what our photos are going to look like when we export them for various purposes. It's a big topic that I can't explain in this video, but the new addition here in Lightroom 6 is CMYK support, or support for CMYK profiles that prepress printers use. It's relevant here because when we create a book in Lightroom, Blurb.com, which is the company that prints the books, uses a CMYK profile. So if you're making a book, you can go out to Blurb.com, search for their ICC profile, and then install it on your computer according to their instructions. And then here in the Develop module, with soft proofing turned on, I can click on the Profile drop-down, go to Other, select my Blurb profile, hit OK, and then click on the drop-down again and choose it. And now I'm getting a better preview of what my photo is going to look like when it's printed in a Blurb book. If I turn soft proofing off and on, you can see that it's telling me that it's going to have more contrast than what I'm otherwise seeing in Lightroom. So that's what's new here in the Develop module. I'm Laura Shue.